Hi friends, today our topic is lichen planus and lichenoid reactions. Let's get started. First of all, what is lichen planus? Now lichen means mosses and planus means flat. So lichen planus is most like flat eruptions on skin or mucous membrane. So it is basically a dermatological disease and an immunologically mediated mucocutaneous disorder. Now for clinical features, it mostly happens in adults of middle age and shows a female predominance. Its classic signs are purple, pruritic, polyclinal papules or plaques. They usually affect the flexor surfaces of the extremities. The areas show fine lace-like network of white lines called Wickham stri. It most commonly involves the posterior buccal mucosa, usually on both sides. Other involved areas could be lateral tongue, dorsal tongue, gingiva, palate, and vermilion border. Now, lichen planus is basically of two types, reticular lichen planus and erosive lichen planus. Reticular lichen planus is more common than the erosive form, but the erosive form is more significant for the patients because it is the symptomatic one. In erosive form, there are atrophic erythematous areas with central ulcerations of varying degrees. The periphery of these atrophic areas is bordered by fine white radiating stri, which as we have already read in the previous slide are known as Wickham stri. Histologically, lichen planus has sawtooth shaped retipids. It also shows destruction of basal cell layer of the epithelium. This is accompanied by an intense band-like infiltrate of predominantly T lymphocytes immediately subjacent to the epithelium. T-generating keratinocytes may be seen in the area of epithelium and connective tissue interface and have been termed as collide, cytoid, hyaline, or civet bodies. You can also see deposition of a shaggy band of fibrinogen at the basement membrane zone. Now, as you can see in this slide, the sawtooth shaped red effects are quite evident. For treatment and prognosis, reticular lichen planus have no symptoms, so no treatment is required of any kind. Erosive lichen planus, on the other hand, is often bothersome because of the open source in the mouth. Now, as lichen planus is an immunologically mediated condition, corticosteroids are recommended. One of the stronger topical corticosteroids, for example, betamethasone or clebetasole gel can be applied. Now, lichenoid reactions are kind of hypersensitivity reactions occurring due to the contact with the dental amalgam. However, other dental materials could be responsible too, like gold, beryllium, chromium, cobalt, and rarely composite resins. These chronic contact reactions appear clinically and histopathologically similar to lichen planus, but demonstrate a different mucosal distribution. The vast majority of lichenoid reactions affect the posterior buccal mucosa, as well as ventral surface of the lateral borders of the tongue. The lesions usually are confined to the area of contact and do not migrate like lichen planus. Lesions may be white or erythematous with or without the peripheral stripe. The signs tend to arise within hours after placement of amalgam restoration and present with erythematous, pruritic, and articular lesions of the ipsilateral oral mucosa and facial skin. In severe reactions, soft tissue edema, tachycardia, and breathing difficulties are also seen. Histopathologically, these reactions are similar to lichen planus. In patients with acute reactions, the process usually is self-limiting and resolves spontaneously within two to three days. For chronic lichenoid reactions, local measures such as improved oral hygiene, smoothening, polishing, and recontouring of the amalgam restoration should be attempted. Here's how we can distinguish between lichen planus and lichenoid reactions clinically. Lichen planus lesions usually migrate while lesions of lichenoid reaction does not. For lichen planus, there is no direct connection to contact with dental materials, while lichenoid reaction usually involves only the mucosa adjacent to the dental material. 
Lichen planus do not demonstrate a significantly increased positive patch testing to dental restorative materials. While for lichenoid reaction, vast majority of the patients react to the offending metal on patch testing. For lichen planus, there is minimal to no clinical improvement on removal of the amalgam. But for lichenoid reaction lesions, they resolve rapidly after removal of the adjacent amalgams. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel guys.